aggressively affirming. I want to aggressively affirm to get the love of my life. Susie, how can I aggressively affirm to get the love of my life? It's the number one question I get. So I'm going to explain to you today how to aggressively affirm to get the love of your life. This is Susie, your beautiful millionaire swan queen. Welcome back to the garden, my beautiful duckling. Subscribe, smash the like button, share my video, and I will love you forever. I am a life coach with a 99.6% success rate in getting you back together with the love of your life. If you are interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, please check out the links below. So you want to aggressively affirm to get the love of your life. So for those of you who don't care about why it works, how it works, and only want to know the phrase, here it is. I am right now, today, happily married to Jared. That's it. Take your phrase, get the fuck over to the other side of the mountain. I don't care. Go away. Do whatever you want with it. But if you want to know why it works, stick around. So let's break this down. I am right now today happily married to Jared. Number one, put the feeling in it because the feeling is what's going to keep this relationship long term. Number two, make a statement. A simple statement. I am happily married to Jared. Number three, put in there right now, now, right now, today. That's it. That is the whole secret to getting whatever you want. So you just repeat that phrase over and over and over until you are literally blue in the face. The more you say it, it's going to happen. It has no choice but to happen. If you keep saying over and over and over and over and over again, I am right now today happily married to Jerry because the universe will deliver it. But for those of you who want to know why the universe delivers it, here's the rest of the story. Your brain is a supercomputer and you have this little thing in there that searches your brain over and over for whatever you are asking it, whatever statement you are saying, whatever phrase you are coming up with. So your supercomputer needs to be asked a question. Well, here's the catch. That reticular activating system in your brain, it stores every second of your life. And I just had this conversation with a friend of mine. She's 36 years old. And that means she has 1,135,296,000 seconds she's been alive once she actually turned 36. Now, she's a few months past 36, so that means she has over 1,135,296,000 memories. So whatever you are saying, whatever you are doing, your question, your statement or phrase has to search through that 1 billion plus memories if you are 36 years old. So if you are asking your brain, why am I disrespected? There's a billion plus things that it has to search through and it's gonna find every reason why you were disrespected. If you are asking your brain, why am I respected? It's gonna search through that 1 billion plus reasons why you are respected. So when you say over and over again, I am right now, today, happily married to Jared, your brain is going to search that 1 billion plus memories to find out why you're happily married to Jared. Now you don't have that little piece of paper yet. Doesn't matter because you keep asking, saying the phrase over and over and over again. And the more you keep saying it over and over and over again, what happens is it goes back and it searches all the reasons why you're happy in your relationship with your Jared. So you keep saying it. I am right now today happily married to Jared. So it keeps going and it searches for reasons why. So the first reason, the way he looks at me. The second reason, uh, because he remembers our conversation verbatim. The third reason, he makes me laugh. The fourth reason, he makes me feel good. Oh, feel, feel good. 
He makes me feel good, especially when he looks at me and I'm laughing. And then it brings up specific memories that you have of things that happened in your relationship. Like when he said that you are his home. Because that's what he said, I am home. So my brain goes, well, I'm his home. That's why he would be happily married to me. Well, then you keep saying it some more and some more and some more. And your brain is searching through these 1 billion plus memories that you have. Then the universe starts to part because what you're focusing on is growing because you only grow what you focus on because that little biased bitch in your brain doesn't care. All she gives you is the facts. She just keeps repeating it over and over and over again. You have four topics you talk about most days. Topic number one, your specific person. Topic number two, your money, your job. Topic number three, the drama that's going on in your life. All that negative crap that's happening. And number four, whether or not you are loved or respected. You got four topics. So you're talking about your specific person or you're talking about your money. You're talking to your best friend. You're talking about your specific person. You're talking to her about your job, your money. I can't do this because I don't have the money. I can't do that because I don't have the money. Think about all those things that you say. And on those topics, usually there's three stories that you repeat. Well, I'm living pay paycheck to paycheck, so I can't go out of town this weekend. It's a holiday weekend in the United States, but you know, I live paycheck to paycheck, so I can't go out of town. You wanna go out to eat? Oh, I don't have the money. Do you want to order pizza, do Netflix and chill? I'll split the price with you. Oh, let me check my bank account and see if I have the money. It's what you do repeatedly with your specific person. You're telling three stories over and over again. They ghosted me. They're disrespecting me. They don't treat me kindly. They're not doing what I want. They're disrespecting me. They ghosted me. Oh, oh my God, best friend. He dared ghosted me again. Oh my God, best friend. Friend, he's so disrespectful. He treats me like crap. You're never going to believe what he did. So your brain goes through that one billion plus memories and says, this is why he disrespected you. This is why he goes to you. This is why he's not being kind to you. But when you start saying to your best friend, you know, when I was dating Jared, I was really happy. Oh my God, this person made me so happy. The reason I want to get back together with them is because they made me so happy. I get back together with them because they make me so happy. And your best friend's going to go, oh, but you know, Susie, you're just delusional. He didn't really treat you kind. He was so disrespectful. He was always ghosting you. So you're right back to square one. You can't change your story because you didn't change it in your head wrong you didn't impress your subconscious wrong you kept talking about the things you didn't want in the relationship you didn't want to be ghosted bam ghosted you didn't want to be disrespected bam disrespected you didn't want to be treated unkind damn you're treated unkind bam 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 it just keeps lining up over and over and over again so we can sit here and we can play through the one billion one hundred 35,296,000 memories. Or we can pull out the tarot cards and we can shuffle the tarot cards and we can say, you know, I want to be happily married to Jared. Tarot cards, what do I need to do? Because I came up through the Twin Flame communities. So I started in the Twin Flame communities. I don't even know how I got added to them. Then I got added to specific persons groups. And then I got added to Neville Goddard groups. And it just kept growing and growing and growing. So in the Twin Flame community, they would go get their psychic readings and their tarot card readings. And they'd say, what do I need to do differently to be happily married to Jared? Well, I have to, you know, paddle away from the crazy story that I'm telling about how horrible he's treating me. 
but you know, I have a bunch of leaks in my boat because there's six swords in them. So, you know, it's just chaotic. What else do I need to do to change my story to be happily married to Jared? Oh, let's see. What's this one? I need justice. Yeah, I need justice. I need him to come to me and apologize for being a total jerk. So I'm out on the lake with my holes in my boat and my ship is, ship is sinking because I need justice. And I need this justice to be able to move forward because once he apologizes, then everything's just going to magically work out. So then I'm going to sit there and I'm going to go, oh, how can I be creative and get a new story? Well, I've already gone through the chaos. I, I just need to balance myself out, deciding what I want. And I can be very creative in order to get what I want. So, you know, let's be creative. What, what do we want? We want to move forward and we want to be happily married to Jared. So look, my night's going to come and, and he's coming towards me. No, no, no. He's over here. He's coming towards me. See, see, if I put him on this side, he's coming towards me. But if I put him on that side, he's going away from me. See, see, this is, this is literally what you guys are doing. You are searching for an answer, but you're, you're looking at this going, well, if it's on this side, then he's, then he's riding on his horse and he's coming to me. And, and I've gotten my justice because he's apologized. And now I can be creative in getting this relationship. And since I'm being creative in getting this relationship, I, I'm just going to sit back and, you know, I'm going to enjoy my glass of champagne. See, look, I'm just going to enjoy my glass of champagne. Because the next card is the Ten of Cups, which means I got everything I wanted. Oh, you know what this means? It means that the collective is going to get their specific person because that's what the twin flame community does. And because the collective is saying, oh, look, you're going to get your happily ever after, but that's not going to happen to me. So your brain goes searching that 1,135,296,000 reasons why it can't happen. Instead of going, oh my God, this is a great sign. Look, I get my happily ever after with this person. It's coming. I'm going to get it. I got my happily ever after. The tarot card said I got my happily ever after. So I'm no longer in my hell loop because I got my happily ever after. And I did it in the most simplest way possible. And the simplest way possible was to talk about the fact that he is my soulmate. He's the love of my life. And of course, he wants to be with me because I get my happily ever after because I was really creative. And I said, everything I saw and everything that happened gave me the love of my life. But you know, until you make a decision on what you want because you know some tarot readers re read reverse some don't and look there's there's two two swords but there's only one person that means you have to make a decision well i i did make my decision because i got my happily ever after and it came in the most creative way with my soulmate see i'm no longer in my hell loop because i made the decision that he's my soulmate he's the only one i want and i'm gonna get him in the most fun so I got them in the most fun, easy, effortless way possible. And the more I sit there and say, look, I got my happily ever after. My brain is searching that 1,135,296,000 memories of what a happily ever after looks like to me. What did I think was happy? What did I think was great? What did I think was wonderful about this relationship? And the more I focused on happily ever after, with my soulmate in the most creative way possible i get everything i ever wanted and then some but if i'm focused on justice because this person disrespected me my boat's gonna sink and they're gonna run away from me which story do you want do you want the the um Oh, where is that little card? Which story do you want? 
Do you want the happily ever after? Or do you want them running away from you? Or do you want to put it over here and have them run towards you? You got to make a decision as to what you want. And once you make that decision and you say the same phrase over and over and over and over again until you are literally blue in the face, it has to show up. Because the more I say, Jared's my soulmate. I got creative. I got everything I possibly wanted in this relationship and I got my happily ever after. My brain is going to say over and over and over and over again, this phrase, it's going to search that 1,135,296,000 reasons. Life is good. And because life is good, the universe parts the Red Sea and Jared walks across the Red Sea and you get your happily ever after with your soulmate. And you really didn't have to do anything other than find a creative way to live your life so that your happily ever after is exactly what you wanted. And because your happily ever after is all you talk about, all of this other stuff with him running away, the holes in the boat, and looking for justice no longer matter. So you made your decision, you got your soulmate, you lived happily ever after. Your brain is a supercomputer. You don't impress your subconscious. You don't make everything magically right. You focus on one thing, one thing. This is my soulmate. I am right now, today, happily married to Jared. And magically, the universe delivers it. We don't need to focus on how the universe delivers it. All we need to focus on is our end. That we are walking away happily ever after getting our dream life. You want to tell the old story of chaos, disrespect, problems. Instead of telling the 10 reasons why you are happy together, you're telling five reasons that you're being kept in hell. How easy is it to change your story? He's my soulmate. I am right now happily married to Jared. The universe is going to deliver this in the most fun, easy way possible. So I get my happily ever after. Again, Jared's my soulmate. I am right now, today, happily married to Jared. The universe is going to get creative and they're going to deliver Jared to you. So you have your happily ever after. But Susie, I doubt that no longer serves you. That puts you right back in hell. Do you wanna be happily married or do you wanna live in hell? You gotta choose. I can't choose for you. I can't walk behind you and slap your head 86,400 seconds a day. All I can do is give you the tools to get out of your hell loop, to get your happily ever after. Quickly, easily, effortlessly, in the most fun way because you said one phrase over and over again, Jared is my soulmate. I am right now, today, happily married to Jared. It has no choice but to show up. Turn blue in the face. Pick one phrase, one phrase. Say it over and over and over again so the universe can deliver it to you in a fun, creative way so you get your happily ever after. Every time you start saying, go back to this, look, you're blindfolded, your ears are covered, and you're in jail. Do you want to be in jail or do you want to live happily ever after? Because every time you give in to the negativity, your brain goes through those 1 billion, 135,296,000 reasons why you can be in hell versus why you are happily with this person. 
I can't choose, but it really is this simple. Continue to talk about the negativity and your brain will prove it or continue to talk about why you are happily married to this person and let your brain bring it to you. I did it with my ex-husband. I did it with the guy that I dated for five years. I can not only get the relationship, I can keep the relationship. The reason again, I say happily married is because you don't wanna be in the relationship and be totally freaking miserable. You want to be in the relationship and you want your justice to be happily ever after. You want your balance to be happily ever after. Because if you notice, Lady Justice, or Rose, because these are Golden Girl cards, she's holding a scale. And Lady Justice only cares about the facts. So fact, I am right now, today, happily married to Jared. I'm no longer in my hell loop because the universe is bringing it to me in the most creative way because I made a decision. He's my soulmate. And right now I am happily married to Jared. Today is the greatest day of my life because right now, today, I am happily married to Jared. You want to aggressively affirm, I suggest you put the feeling in there because you don't want to wind up like I did with the narcissist and then have to kind of constantly sit there and say, that's my husband, I'm married to that person. You're going to introduce them. That's my husband. I'm married to that person. You don't want to be married to a narcissist. Balance your scales. Talk about why you got your happily ever after with the love of your life because you made your decision. The universe got creative and they brought them to you. It's easy peasy lemon squeezy once you make the decision. But until you make the decision, the universe can't deliver you the world. I love you guys. Have an absolutely positively amazing day. And as always, leave me a comment and let me know how I am drastically changing your life for the better.